On behalf of St. Bernard's Church, we would like to welcome everybody for uh, really the wonderful turnout that we have for this closing mass. We want to welcome uh, Bishop Folda for coming out to celebrate this uh, with us. Also, just a little reminder to turn off cell phones if anybody uh, hasn't done that already. Um, and uh, we look forward to being able to celebrate and uh, kind of go out for Holy Mother Church here that has impacted so many of you over many years to give her uh, a nice uh, kind of final hurrah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen.
just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
on that day. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, The sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil, and produced fruit, a hundred, or sixty, or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in perils, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but do not listen nor understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see in your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but do not see it. To hear what you hear, but do not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding. And the evil one comes and steals it away, what was sown in his heart. Seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word. When the worldly anxieties and the lure of riches choke the word, it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Should we do that again? <laughs> the seed that falls on good soil shall yield a fruitful harvest. Indeed it has. The seed of our Lord's word and grace has fallen on good soil here at St. Bernard's Parish for many years now, and it indeed has borne a rich harvest. My brothers and sisters, I'm glad to be with you to celebrate this final Mass here at St. Bernard's Church. I know that everyone here cares deeply about this parish and that the request, the decision to close this parish, this church, 
came only, only after much discussion and prayer. Of course, it's always, it's always sad to see a parish close. As I've said many times before, I have great, great reverence for the small little parishes of our diocese. And I was privileged to serve as a pastor of several such parishes before I became your bishop. So I know the value of a parish just like this one. I know the many good fruits, the bountiful harvest that has come from the life of this parish here in Ariska. But I also understand the challenge of sustaining a parish with a declining number of members, and I'm very, very grateful for the dedication to all of the efforts, efforts that I'm sure I'll never know, that so many have made over the years to keep your parish alive and thriving and active. On this occasion, two different thoughts come to mind. First of all, Thanksgiving. And secondly, a resolution. A resolution to persevere in the faith. First, I think it's very, very fitting, it's necessary to thank God for the many, many ways that he has touched the lives of so many people through the life of this parish of St. Bernard's. For more than 100 years now, St. Bernard's has served the people of God in this area. Just consider the number of children who were baptized here. The number of masses that have been celebrated at this altar. The many, many penitents who have come to have their sins forgiven, who have received the, the grace of God's mercy in reconciliation. Think of the Christian vocations that have been fostered here. The number of husbands and wives joined in marriage in this parish church. Maybe some of you here were married right here at this altar. The number of young people who have been taught the faith in this parish. I can imagine quite a few of you have that experience as well. And I understand that there have, over the course of time, been five religious vocations from this parish, one of whom is Father Jake Miller, native son of this parish, who is with us today. And even though it's, it's always been a small parish relative to many others, I think you could say that it's a mighty parish anyway. And it's a place where God's grace has been powerfully at work, where the angels adore in the presence of our God. A great number of souls have been blessed by their association with St. Bernard's Parish, including your own. And that, my friends, will not end today. God, I assure you, will continue to touch with his love wherever we are, wherever we gather to worship him, all those who have been part in any way of this parish. When we hear his gospel and receive the grace of his sacraments, he'll be there. He'll be with us. He'll be dwelling within our hearts, moving us still to be his beloved followers, to be his children. So we give thanks. And rightly so. But our second thought should be a determination to keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts and in our lives. Of course, being a follower of, of Jesus requires commitment, doesn't it? And a readiness to move forward no matter the cost. But our Lord is with us. He sustains us along the way. We're not alone on our journey. Today in the Gospel, Jesus tells the parable of the sower and the seed to encourage us to receive the grace he has to offer and to allow it to bear fruit in our lives. There are many challenges and distractions in our time that, 
but trying to choke off the faith of God's people. But you know, this parish over the years has cultivated good soil, good spiritual soil in the lives of its members. So the gospel truly has yielded a rich harvest over these many years. The very fact that you're all here is a sign of that. It's a sign that it has made a mark on, on all of us, on all of you. But now it will be up to us, as God's people, to persevere and to keep the seeds of faith growing, even as we do move in different directions. Jesus reminds us once again that we aren't in this alone. He's with us to accompany us, and he lifts us up along the way. He wants us to continue to grow in faith and in charity so that the world can come to know him and embrace him as we have. He will keep sowing the seed, and he asks us to keep bringing forth a rich harvest for his kingdom. That's now our ongoing task. My brothers and sisters, Jesus continues to send us out and to commission us to live our faith and to share this faith with others. He asked Peter and Paul and all the other apostles to set out on new paths and to trust him. And they did. I think we can say because they put their trust in him, because they persevered in faith, we're all here today. Because they set the stage so long ago for what we are doing now. Gathering at the altar of the Lord. Hearing his word proclaimed. Going forth, <coughs> living our faith. Our Lord continually opened new doors and revealed new opportunities to them. So that their faith might grow and that so his mission might continue. Because of their faith and their courage... Catholic faith has been passed on from generation to generation, even to our own time. And that's true right here in this parish, and in your families as well. The seeds of faith, I know, were planted by your ancestors and by the founding members of St. Bernard's. And that gift of faith has been passed along, and now we must continue to give that gift to others as well. Our work is not done, but it does take a new direction. I know it's always disappointing when a, a parish, when a church has to close, but at a certain point, change is necessary. It's not always easy, but it becomes necessary. In fact, parishes have come and gone in the history of the church and in the history of our own diocese as well. But the faith of the people who belong to those parishes endures. I don't need to tell you, I know you know this, that the church is more than a building. It's built on Christ. It's sustained by the good news of the gospel and the Holy Eucharist and all the sacraments. And it will continue to the end of time because Jesus has assured us that it will. When he established his church on Peter and the apostles, our Lord promised that he himself would sustain it and that the gates of death would not overcome it. And that, my friends, is the source of our enduring hope that Christ sustains his church and will never abandon, will never abandon us. And that's exactly why, my friends, we must carry on trusting in the grace of Jesus within his church. You know, as we close this chapter of the life of St. Bernard's, I know there are fond memories of the many blessings received and all the people, all the families, who have belonged to this parish. But I do hope there's also a determination to keep alive the gift of faith that Jesus
Jesus has given us. And not just to keep it, but to live it and to share it with others. I thank God. I thank God for the grace that he has given to the people of this parish through the ages. And I thank God for all of you, the people of St. Bernard's, both past and present, and, and really all of you who in any way are associated with this parish. For many years you've shown your love for our Lord and for his church. You've loved your parish and you've loved one another. And I know, I'm confident, that that will continue. I thank God for the many ways that he has been at work among you and those who came before you. I'm sure that in every one of your memories there are stories of your parents, your grandparents, maybe even great-grandparents, stories of, of their participation in the life of this parish. As you continue now in your, in your own parish communities, the church is going to need you. The church will need you to still be active, to still be zealous, just as you have been here at St. Mary's. So my brothers and sisters, bring your faith, bring your, your talents and all that you are to Christ and to his church, and he will continue to bring forth many new blessings among us. As Jesus said in the gospel, the seed sown on rich soil is the one that hears the word and bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Today we give thanks for the hundredfold blessings from our Lord that he has offered to us through St. Bernard's. We can be confident, we can be absolutely sure that he will still be with us, he will still amaze us. And I know too, you can count on St. Bernard, your heavenly patron, the patron saint of this parish, to accompany you and pray for you as you continue your journey of faith. The seed sown on rich soil will bear an abundant harvest, and it has. Amen.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Catholics may place the celebration of the Eucharist at the heart of their lives, transforming human relationships in a very deep way, and opening to the encounter with God and all, and all their brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the faith of those who have established St. Bernard. May their families be blessed with a faith that is deep and wide. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left the church and do not practice the faith, may they receive mercy from God's members, from the church's members, and return givingly all glory to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather for the growing of crops in the hope of an abundant harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of St. Bernard's, may they be received into their new parish homes and be appreciated for the great gift they are to the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will heal the sick, give faith to the doubt, and hope to those of our, who are discouraged. We pray in silence for our own intention we bring to this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed, in particular those deceased members of St. Bernard's, through the mercy of God, may come to experience a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
Almighty, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread of the offering. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Brothers and sisters, in my sacrifice of yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our
Pharisees to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent you your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please join in our communion hymn number 333, Seed Scattered and Sown, number 333.
Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Uh, 
people of the members of St. Bernard's are a very diverse group, and they're just a little bit stubborn. <laughs> That's how we've made it for this long. Now, as you see, it mentioned also, this is happening in other places, but it, it is happening here, and it's been extremely sad. So, you know, even though we um, are extremely sad, we look at what's going on in society. The demographics in North Dakota are certainly changing. People are moving to larger cities in a, in a, in a greater sense. And then, as also has been mentioned, society is moving away from the Lord. And you don't have to have real clean glasses or very focused glasses to see the results of what's taking place. Uh, it is, uh, in my eyes, certainly disturbing. Um, you know, there's nobody here today, I, I would almost bet you, that doesn't have a family member that either doesn't go to any church and possibly doesn't even believe in God. But we as a man, humanity is broken and, and we have we are fallen. And we fail in our doing the Lord's will. We want to do our own. So if we think about that, if you truly want to know who you are, get to know God. Get to know Jesus Christ. Trust that the Holy Spirit is going to inspire you. And bring you this message of love and mercy. It has been a long road to get to this point. So I say goodbye to this building. But I know she will not be forgotten. She has been a refuge in troubled times. And I ask that you take the gospel into the world that needs it so desperately. Praise be Jesus Christ.
these parishes stand. So first of all, from Holy Trinity in Fingal, Father Scott Harnick as pastor, um, and the families that will be going to Fingal ask you to stand when I say your names. Uh, Yvonne Steidel, Tony Ianish, Julius Heinze, Royal Jorgensen, and Queen Della Nam. <laughs> If Deacon Leitner could stand, um, he is the delegate. Father Dukesher is on vacation uh, to Utah or somewhere, I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it, it's given that he couldn't be here, Deacon will receive. So the parishioners that are going to St. Catharines in Valley City are Karen Richmond, Ted and Beth Wisniewski, Rick and Betty McLaughlin, Jack Ortz, Darlene Trader, and Ralph and Cheryl Chase. And so these will be the ones that will be received into Valley City. So we'll give them a round. <laughs> In Valley City, also, just so everybody knows, for sacramental records, if you want, uh, you know, baptism uh, certificates or those things, they are maintained meticulously by the Catholic Church. So they will all go to the parish of Valley City. This parish is consolidated into Valley City, um, and so our records will always be there if you need them. Um, then the next uh, parish is um, uh, in Daisy, and Father Sean Mulligan is pastor there, or outside of Daisy, I guess. Um, so Gary Bosch and Kelly and Amanda Chase. And so let's get started. And then um, there are two additional parishes, um, Hope and Sanborn, that get stuck with the same knucklehead they had before. So um, those would be uh, Marlene Bosch going to St. Agatha's in Hope. And then Jim and Bev uh, McAllister, who will uh, be members of Sacred Heart and Sanborn, um, and Jeremy and Lacey Undum, who will be members of Sacred Heart and Sanborn. And then just a reminder that immediately following, or not immediately, but uh, at 5 o'clock there will be um, the supper reception uh, at the reserve at Woodland outside of Valley City. Uh, the address is on the back of your program, um, so you can type that into your cars if they do those things. Um, and or you can call the people that do know the way out there. Um, and then also we have in the basement, there's uh, in, under the rectory, in the rectory basement, uh, there's a couple tables that have some history things if you want to uh, look at those. There's also free items uh, under the church here, uh, <coughs> leftover cups, plates, whatever, any of that you want, take it out of here. That's, uh, that, that makes it easier. So uh, anything in this underneath here, except for the tables it's on, uh, all of that you can uh, walk off with. Um, and then under the um, uh, rectory, there's also a bunch of old pictures, actually, um, and so those are also free for rather than sitting in some archive uh, file at uh, Valley City and never looked at again. Uh, we felt it better to um, uh, make them available to people. So old pictures, some religious books, articles, things like that are free. The history stuff, though, don't take that. I want that. Um, uh, but all the rest of the uh, things on those tables you can have. So again, just uh, thank everybody for coming out. Thank uh, Bishop. And really, uh, as we go to the uh, reception, that one of the things that we kind of hoped for is that this would be um, a, like more of a family reunion than anything else. The people that uh, <coughs> came together, thankful for these remnants that have stayed and kept this parish open as long as it has. That there's not another parish in the diocese with 16 families that maintains a priest on site in a towel where even the bar is closed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is an amazing thing that it is became this one. And so you should all thank the remaining parishioners who have kept it going uh, for 
for this one, because that's a major accomplishment. Um, so uh, we thank them all, and we uh, uh, continue the family reunion at the reserve at Woodland. <laughs> Thank you. 